हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डी के गौतम एंड थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग इंटरव्यू पॉइंट सो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट ट्रिगर इन सिंपल सर्वर्स ओके सो नाउ लेट्स गेस स्टार्ट एंड सो फर्स्ट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज ट्रिगर एंड देन वी विल क्रिएट अ ट्रिगर आफ्टर दैट वी विल अंडरस्टैंड दैट व्हाट इज द सिंटैक्स ऑफ ट्रिगर क्रिएशन एंड देन आई विल क्रिएट अ ट्रिगर सो दैट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड बेटर सो लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज ट्रिगर इन सिंपल सर्वर so guys uh, the trigger is a database object that is executed automatically when an event occurs in a database so what is the meaning of this line so actually whenever we will do any operation in uh, our sql server okay it's like uh, suppose if we want to insert a record if i want to update a record if i want to delete a record at that time this trigger procedure will be executed okay so whenever any event occurs like insert or update or delete then automatically this trigger get fired okay so now next point a trigger is a special kind of stored procedure or stored program so we can also call it as a special kind of stored procedure okay or stored program the syntax of uh, trigger is similar okay there is little difference now each trigger is always associated with a table the trigger we are creating a trigger is always related to a particular table okay so we have to create a trigger with that related table suppose i am having a table with the name employee so suppose i want to insert some record into the employee table at that time i want to perform any other operation so what we will do we will create a trigger at the employee table okay now we will understand what is the triggers characteristics there are some triggers characteristics let's understand we cannot manually execute invoke triggers actually we cannot auto, uh, we cannot manually call this like suppose i want to insert a record we can manually insert a record into the table but uh, suppose i i want to fetch record from the table so what we will do we will just write one query select it from this table okay like this we cannot manually execute triggers okay next point triggers does not receive parameters we, we we cannot pass parameters to a trigger okay it is parameterless now a transaction cannot be committed or rolled back inside a trigger these are the characteristics of the trigger okay now types of triggers so there are some types of triggers in our sql server so let's understand what are the types of triggers actually in sql server there are three types of triggers in sql server okay so now understand first one data manipulation language or we can say dml trigger okay so what is dml trigger dml trigger is nothing but dml trigger are automatically fired when an insert update or delete event occurs on a table now understand what is ddl triggers data definition language so when uh, ddl triggers are automatically invoked when a create alter or drop event occurs on a database it is fired in response to server scoped or database scoped event okay now third one is logon triggers logon triggers is invoked when a logon event is raised when a user session is established okay so now let's understand how we can create a trigger in our database so guys i will open this uh, sql server management studio okay to perform so here i'm having table like a uh, user register student and register log so what i will do so i will create uh, triggers here in the user register table there are no trigger as you can see here there is no trigger okay if i expand it there is no trigger okay so i will create in this table user register table okay so as of now there is no record in this both the table okay as you can see there is no record okay so i need to create trigger so let's comment this two line actually it is not required for us now so i am commenting okay so here i need to create a trigger let's understand trigger syntax so trigger syntax is very simple so what we will do first we have to write the create trigger and the schema name and trigger name here on table so on which table we are creating suppose we are having employee table okay after here we have to provide the input like insert or update or delete and anything okay not for replication okay here as and here we have to provide the sql statements okay 
so guys what i i will do so guys i here i will create one trigger whenever any insert operation happen in this table user register table at that time this trigger will fire okay so i already have uh, written the code so i just need to paste it here so what i will do create trigger here the trigger name okay you can provide the underscore also tr you can give the meaningful name of the trigger so trg i can also write tr user register user register insert okay so i'm so i'm giving the meaningful name here like user register insert okay so in the user registration table at the insert operation i am creating the trigger on this table okay we can also write here like uh, in the next line so that you can understand clearly for insert you can see for which operation we are creating for insert operation as we need to declare one uh, variable here declare int okay so what i am doing here whenever any insert operation occurs in this table user register table at that time i just need to find out the id of this created record and then i want to insert particular uh, register uh, record into this register log table so that we can identify okay this uh, in the user register table one m uh, uh, one record is created on this particular date and what operation happens like uh, insert update or delete at what time it is created so we can like like okay so now i just need to execute it so that now command completed successfully if i will refresh it we can see our trigger here okay tr underscore user insert here we can see trigger tr underscore user register insert okay so this trigger is created for us okay so what i will do i i just i'm trying to create a record into this uh, user register table so uh, i have written one query insert into the, the, this so let's see first we are not having any record let's um, let's see okay now i will execute this query and now you can see one row affected one row affected so now if i will check this user register table we can see here the record is inserted if i will check this user uh, if i will check this registered log table there is also a record inserted what so this is the user id is one as you can see user id is one here id okay and we have performed the insert operation so we have written here insert okay and id we have fetched from this line okay and get it so we can see register log select stop insert operation and on the date okay now so this is the dml trigger okay so guys i want to show you one more trigger here so suppose this is the insert trigger suppose i want to insert one record onto the table so for this i can create like this trigger okay tr underscore like this so on update so whenever any update operation occurs at that time what we can do we can create this trigger and so this operation will be will also so what i am doing here so this on the update <coughs> on any update operation this trigger get fired okay in this table in this table user register table any update operation happen at that time this trigger get fired okay so suppose if i want to update this record previous record suppose i am having this record peter okay i want to update some record here suppose i want to change the department so what i will do i will write a query uh, like this uh, update user register set so what i want to update department set department is equal to suppose uh, it will be suppose java okay department will be java where id is equal to 1 okay the user who is having id 1 i want to update the department from dot net to java okay one row is affected this record is updated now we can see this table also register log here what it is saying update operation is happening so guys here i intentionally put wrong spelling of the update okay so i will tell you why in the next so i want to update one procedure or i can say alter process at that time i will update it okay so that you can understand okay now it is not required for us now move further so now we need to understand dl trigger okay guys so as you know this is the this is the very simple uh, syntax of the dl trigger so we can create okay so i have already created so i just need to paste it here to save our time so create trigger tr register alter table on database so it is created on the database level okay so on which database in this table in this database sql tutorial db okay as begin 
friend here. We can put our statement here. Okay, whatever the statements we have. Okay, sir, so like I want to uh, perform a uh, delete. I want to insert a record into the another table at that time. Okay, so we can uh, create our. Uh, we can write our statement here. Okay, SQL statement. So as of now, what I am writing here. I just want to print the message. Print. You cannot alter table and roll web transaction. Okay. So what I will do? I will just need to execute it, and this command completed successfully. If I will check here, first refresh it, and here we will check on the database level. So programmability, and here uh, database triggers, and here we you can see tr restrict alter table. Okay. Now we cannot do any alter operation on the database. So guys, I am having this table, uh, user register table. Suppose I want to add one more column here. Okay, but what we need to do? We need to alter the table. We need to alter table. Okay, so this trigger will restrict to alter table. So what query I have to write here? Alter table, user register, add test column. I want to add here for the testing purpose. Okay, let me execute this query. So what happened? Let you can see. You cannot alter tables. So where this message coming? You can see here. You cannot alter tables. Okay. Now if I will check the user register table, column is not added here in this table. Okay. So this trigger is restricting to alter table. Okay. So I as of now I am just going to drop this trigger. As of now I don't require. Okay. I just showed you to understand what is the DDL trigger. Okay. So I am just going to drop it. Okay, like this. Now move to the next. Let's understand logon trigger. It is used to restricting login to SQL Server. Suppose I want to log into the SQL Server database. So at that time, so it will restrict it. Okay, logins to SQL Server. So at that time, we can go for login triggers. Okay, tracking login activity. Okay, so we can also track the login activity. How many members are login into the database? Okay, so limiting number of sessions for a specific login. For for more For more detail on the logon trigger, you can see this uh, Microsoft document here. Logon triggers. You can understand like I have just uh, put on the highlighted point here. So like you can logon triggers to audit and control server session. Okay. So tracking the tracking the login activity. Okay. Restricting login to the SQL server. Limiting the number of sessions for a specific login. Okay. Like this. And we have to create it on the master. So This is the login trigger, and you can read this document. So, if you have any doubt, I will tell you. Okay, first try to understand this. Okay, guys. Uh, also, I can provide you the link in the description box of this video. Now we need to understand alter or modify triggers. Okay, we can write a very simple syntax like alter trigger trigger name, and on table we have to provide the table name or whatever the view we are we are having with. For after in, instead of okay like this, and then we have to write the insert, update, or delete as, and here we have to write our SQL statement. Okay guys, okay like now let's uh, understand it practically. So guys, I already have written the code, so I just need to paste it here. So what I have written alter trigger trigger name here we can give the schema name, but in our case it is not required. But you can provide. user register update on this is the table name we can put into the next line for update so here i have created one uh, i have created one variable and to use here okay so i just need to update this okay just before that i just to show you that i intentionally uh, put that wrong spelling okay because of that i am just going to update this trigger okay now i just need to execute it suppose again i will put here dot net or i will see python so this is the update operation is happening into the user register table now we can see two records are affected so first one is user register because we have updated this table now department is python and we can see the table uh, user register log register log and there is one record updated we can see update okay so like this now so next one is drop or delete triggers so how we can drop or we can delete triggers there are two ways like from the ui from the sql server management studio or we can also write a sql statement okay so the syntax is very simple drop trigger if it exists if exists it means we are searching if it is available then drop and we can also pass a multiple trigger name here so trigger 1 comma trigger 2 like this we have to put the comma okay like this 
Okay, so let's jump to the SQL Server. Now, what I want to do, I just want to uh, drop a trigger. Okay, so what I can say, uh, what is the syntax drop trigger and trigger name? Okay, so I just want to one drop this one trigger. Okay, so whatever the trigger we are having, so here we are having two triggers. Okay, so let's remove this. So what I can say, uh, drop trigger and here we have to pass the trigger name. Okay, so this trigger I want to drop. So okay, so command executed successfully. So if I will check it, refresh it, uh, we can see this trigger is no longer exists into the database. Okay, so this trigger is dropped from the database. Okay, now enable or disable, enable or disable SQL triggers in our database. Okay, so let's understand what is the syntax. Why enabling and disabling is required? Suppose I don't want to perform any other operation at the insert command. I don't want to perform any other operation on the delete command. Okay, so sometimes we need to disable the trigger. Okay, let's understand how to disable trigger. Okay, by default because it is enabled. So first I need to disable the trigger. So we have to write the syntax like uh, disable trigger trigger name on object name. Here we have to pass the object name on the details okay so like this. suppose i want to enable this trigger back to okay so what we can write enable trigger schema name and trigger name, and on object okay guys so like this we can enable uh, or disable our trigger okay so guys let me write one query here so we can write our query here trigger here we need to pass trigger name tr user okay this is the user register insert on which table on this is happening on the user register on user register so this trigger is available on the, this table now disable this we can see command completed success now this trigger we can say will not perform anything okay so this as of now this is exist but it will not do any operations uh, let's understand suppose i am trying to insert one record suppose i will say here john okay so this is dot net and the can say write 65 uh, suppose 95 okay now i am just trying to insert this record so this record is inserted but another this we can say the register log table is not having any record related to this okay so this trigger is no longer exist for now because this is we have disabled okay now we want to enable this trigger so to enable this trigger what i can say what i can write here i just need to update the, the syntax of this enable trigger trigger name on user register suppose i have just enabled this trigger now if i will execute this query now we can see user register here in this table now we are having three records because this is duplicate now in this user register in this register log we are having we can see in here now we are having four records because this insert operation just have user id is three you can see user id is three this one okay so guys like this we can uh, enable or disable trigger okay guys so guys that's it for this video i will provide you the all the code into my blog so you can copy from there okay guys so there that's it for this video if you have any doubt you can ask me through comment and i will guys to make a video it will take lots of time we need to do lots of r d for making a good video for you so guys please don't forget to like this video and share with your friends thank you guys have a nice day thanks for watching this video guys please subscribe our youtube channel if you haven't subscribed you can follow me on facebook twitter and linkedin this is my blog url you can check it out guys if you have any doubt you can ask me through comment please provide your feedback thanks